Simon from Manchester Wine School here and simonwoods.com. Uh, I've got an array of three roses in front of me and uh, I'm really looking forward to them uh, because they are from uh, arguably the producer of the finest roses in the world. There are certainly other people who are trying to uh, do a great job with rosé, but I think that these guys here, Chateau d'Esclin, they are the ones, uh, they are the act to follow. And they've been going for they're probably about 20, uh, 15 years now. I think it was about 2006 that uh, the estate, which had been there for a long time, uh, but was bought by Sasha Lachin, whose family does a bit of this, a bit of that, and um, well-known in, in Bordeaux. But Sasha Lachine moved to Provence in 2006 and uh, bought, the, bought this estate with the aim of making the world's finest rosé. And at the time, uh, they started off, they were doing four rosés. Uh, there are now five rosés in the portfolio, plus a white and a red, both of which are terrific, by the way. Uh, but it's the rosés that they're best known for. And uh, the tears go uh, from the, uh, well, the best known of them is it's called Whispering Angel. And uh, it's a bit, it can become something of a, a cult wine. There is now something, uh, a, a slight leap above there, which is called Rock Angel, which has only appeared in probably about four or five years ago. Well, in the last five years. Then there is uh, Chateau d'Esclin uh, itself, uh, and um, uh, but the wines that I've got today are from the, 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 the top two cuvées. Uh, one of them is called Le Clin, and uh, the top one is called Garousse. And what's the difference between them? Well, they're both based on uh, old vine Grenache, and uh, with little bits of Syrah and Vermentino in the blend. And, uh, but I think the, 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 the difference with the Garousse it's a, it, the, the Grenache comes from a, specific, a particular vineyard. And I remember visiting the, the, the estate probably about 2010, so just over, uh, just over 10 years ago. And then they were saying, oh, it's this 80 year old vineyard. So it's uh, well into its, um, its 10th decade now and um, uh, producing uh, wine. So why would they want to make a really lovely old, uh, old Grenache into rosé? Well, if, you, if you're asking that, clearly you haven't tasted them. Uh, so what I've got here, yes, there are two, uh, two different cuvées here, but I've got two vintages of Garus. So I've got uh, two 2019 wines, one Le Clin and one Garus, uh, and then I've found uh, somewhere in the woods cellars uh, a bottle of 2015 Garus, uh, which I'm going to compare it with. One of the things I noticed, first of all, is... Um, so these two are the Garusis here, and I don't know if you can tell against my white background, but I've taken uh, a few pictures and you might be able to see a, a slight difference in colour. Uh, most people look at the colour of rosés and they say, oh right, well the paler the better. And uh, I've heard of people going into restaurants and say, I would like your palest possible rosé. And you want to say to them, why don't you have a white wine then? But uh, there, is, there is a delicacy about uh, the colours of these. Uh, my wife's just wandered in and said like, they're a strange colour. And um, yeah, because some rosés, you can almost read by them. They glow in the dark, they're day glow pink. And, uh, but these are uh, subtle and they are subtly flavoured wines as well. Or oh, they were the last time I tried them. Um, I actually, to be honest, I've had a little sip just to check that the bottles are uh, in good nick, and they, they are very much in good nick. But um, here, it, it is this idea uh, where it's taking rosé just from being a, what I call a simple, sweet, kiss me quick, uh, really nice by the side of the seaside type of wine. To be honest, most wines taste good in those situations. But uh, with these, these are subtle wines which are made of almost in, um, in the style that you would do white burgundy. So barrel fermented, um, barrel aged and um, capable, well, from the first sniff of the 2015, capable of uh, not being just something that you DYA, drink youngest available, but capable of, uh, of uh, going on for a bit. I'm going on for a bit, aren't I here? Uh, so I'd better get on to the first one, uh, which is Le Clam 2019, and I will give it a sniff. And it smells just like you want a rosé, a good, classy rosé uh, to, to smell like. It's got what I call the sandiness, uh, the saltiness that uh, I often get in, in Provence rosés. But then it's got these two little bits of, uh, two elements of flavour, uh, which assures you that it is this halfway house between red wine and white wine. So there's something almost peachy um, and like quite delicate citrus fruit there. But there is also something that it says there is some redness in here. So there's a little bit of uh, red berry um, and it smells appetising. I can feel myself salivating, but that was sweet. And that's a creeper. 
Uh, it's got those same sort of characters that I was smelling, so that mixture of the citrus and the peach with the red berry. But then it's got these um, salty floral characters going on in there. Uh, lovely, lovely texture. Um, it has you, you sort of slap, uh, smacking your lips and going, I want some more of that. Uh, but then there's this power as well. Um, and it's 14.5% alcohol. It carries it extremely well. It certainly feels refreshing. Uh, but then it feels refreshing, but with presence and power. M a strange uh, and fascinating, really delicious combination of this elegance and power and finesse, uh, but presence. And uh, yeah, I, um, I think that's uh, extremely tasty. And uh, uh, I'll be enjoying... Uh, Probably another glass of that at the end of this, and, uh, and I'll probably be uh, enjoying hopefully a glass of the Garus. So let's move on to the Garus. Um, so as I said, the uh, there is the, the, there's the, the uh, Chateau d'Esclan winery, and from what I remember from visiting them, there is then this slope up to a road, and then on the opposite side of the road there is this uh, lovely old vineyard of uh, uh, of old Grenache uh, on which the wine is based. So 2019. Uh, I think handled in pretty much the same way, uh, better fermented in, and aged in barrels, not uh, really small barrels, I think they're more five, six hundred litre size and not new barrels, so you're not getting this whack of oak, uh, well just uh, oak flavour, uh, just thinking about uh, any oak character that uh, that was coming through in Lake Clown, it was more to do with uh, more textural thing than uh, anything out and out uh, uh, smoky vanilla or anything like that. Let's see what Garus is like. And it's a fascinating contrast. Uh, what I get here, um, it uh, feels like a younger, uh, bolder version of Lake Clan. Um, younger as in, maybe I do notice a little bit of uh, the oak elements here, a little bit of uh, toastiness, smokiness uh, in the aromas, uh, but then also in those, the same types of aromas that you're getting there, the citrus, the peach, the, the berries, uh, but they've been turned up a little bit, not too loud, uh, so not that it's, it's not like the same wine on steroids or anything like that. It's got those flavours, but it's like as if someone's broadened them out and uh, added extra elements in there. So let's taste it and see what those extra elements are. Yeah, and that's when I noticed the uh, élevage elements more. So there's a creaminess, there's a nuttiness, um, like hazelnuts and... Um, uh, yeah, it feels like a, a wine that, um, whereas Le Clan is sort of going... Hello, here I am. This is sort of going, oh, I am very good, but I'm going to be coming back next year and then the year after, and then the year after that. But it's this lovely length. There is this coolness, a cool confidence about the whole wine. Uh, again, it's 14.5% alcohol, um, but carrying it, um, I, I noticed more power here. Uh, I mean, the first one was powerful, but uh, this one feels, uh, feels like even more power, but still with this delicacy, still with this uh, persistence and uh, still absolutely delicious, uh, e even more delicious, but um, we are a step up and, uh, uh, and uh, what you would expect. So I'm going to have another squig. Yeah, delicious. And uh, uh, that finish that you get, that um, sappiness uh, and that salty element as well. So that's 20... Uh, 15, uh, sorry, that's 2019. This is the 2015. Let's do this uh, for comparison. Uh, so colour-wise, uh, so four years older, it is a little bit uh, darker in colour, but it's certainly uh, not a colour that uh, would be out of place in a row of uh, other rosés from 2019, even 2020. Uh, for, so it's, it's four stroke, five years older than that. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it looks in good kit. So let's give it a sniff. Well, it's what's interesting here, I was talking about that creamy, hazelnutty character there. Uh, here, I sniff it, and uh, those characteristics, which are uh, to do with the, the elevage, they are, they're here, uh, but um, it's as if the, well, well to put, uh, let's put it this way, if I were to be blindfold and not be able to see the colour, I'd be bang in the middle of uh, a burgundy with this one. Uh, there is this... Uh, knowing, citrusy, herby, uh, creamy, nutty aroma that uh, has me going, mm, I, I, I really like this and uh, uh, I want to know more about it. So I'm going to give it a taste and uh, see, and, and I'm going to get to know it better. So it's um, the fruit of youth is slowly receding and the knowingness, the wisdom of maturity, which of course we all 
a choir. Um, that seems to be the thing that's coming through now. Um, it is a lovely, lovely, fascinating, complex, layered wine. One of those that you just keep coming back to and going, oh, there's a bit of this, there's a little bit of uh, marzipan. Uh, but then there is a little touch of that red berry that's still coming through. And then there is that nectarine. Um, and then there is a something that is like um, uh, floral. Uh, and is it a bit of jasmine or is it a bit of honeysuckle? Um, it's just, um, it is really, really lovely, lovely wine. Um, and uh, I mean, people sometimes look at the price of Garus and say that is, it is a, it, it's an expensive wine. It, it, it is an expensive wine, but I suppose if you have to put it into context with uh, other wines of that quality, character, uh, ageability, that's, some, uh, that's a um, characteristic that sometimes people put into what makes a wine great. Uh, I think that this is the wine that's got it. Uh, I'm not sure I, whether they, I think 2006 was their first vintage and I don't know uh, whether they made Garus from the start, but I'd be fascinated to see what uh, uh, old bottles of it taste like because uh, um, on, on this basis, uh, it seems to be a wine that has the uh, legs, has the uh, power, has the character uh, to, to be able to, to go on for a bit and um, it's very, very tasty. I feel, I feel privileged, sometimes you feel privileged to taste wine. I feel privileged to taste these wines. And uh, um, so I'm going to uh, uh, enjoy them. Uh, uh, fortunately, there are a few other people around who will also be able to enjoy them. Uh, not, uh, some of them are, are gonna get um, the, the corks put back in, back in and uh, they're gonna be enjoyed tomorrow. But uh, uh, my wife and I are gonna be enjoying, uh, I, can't, I don't know if it's Les Clans or, or La Garus, which I, maybe we'll have a little, uh, th three glasses of each and uh, do some comparing and contrasting over the course of our evening meal. But um, uh, they're, all, uh, they're all excellent wines and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so seek them out and um, uh, I'll be doing another one, one of these videos soon uh, to, with, with the, the three that are in the, um, I was saying, lower tier is the wrong word, but it's just, it's just like different parts of the portfolio. Uh, these are the ambitious ones, the other ones are the pleasurable ones, but to be honest, these are giving me enormous pleasure and uh, they're going to give me um, even more pleasure uh, after I've turned the video off. So, <laughs> see you soon.